Continuing the trend of finding unusual and unexpected people at a tank show, this is Drakenfell. Do I have that right? Drakenfell? Drakenfell. Drakenfell? Yeah. What does it mean? Classified secret. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it, um, it's a concept that's tied in with dragons, but it has a very, uh, it's got a background in a language that's basically extinct, almost extinct. It only has about 50 speakers in, uh, in South America. Huh. Which is very bizarre because it actually it sounds very close to Drakenfels, which is obviously German, but it's not. It may have been influenced by Mennonites moving South America, I don't know. Uh, so I've, I've been told that this guy's basically the floaty thing version of the chieftain. <laughs> so uh, do you have a naval background or what, how did you start off this Drachen, um, Drakenfels? Sorry. Yeah, I, I personally don't have a naval background. Um, I have a family naval background um, going way back. Um, Helpfully, my family, seem, at least on my dad's side, seems to spend the better part of the last thousand years in the military in some way, shape or form, down to my granddad's generation, mm. uh, which makes it very easy to find out where they were. <laughs> um, but as a result, growing up, um, I heard stories from my granddad about what his brothers did in the Second World War, um, what his father did in World War I, and that kind of kick-started me getting interested in history. Um, and so I'm interested in all types of history. Uh, but naval history is my, my, my main love. I think the mainly because when I was about four or five, my grandmother took me down to Portsmouth um, to the historic dockyard um, after having read to me uh, one of the sort of early ladybird type books about Nelson. And I, I can still remember walking into the historic dockyard and seeing victory as it was at the time with all, all masts and rigging set, mm. nice sunny day, and I was kind of hooked <laughs> from then on. So you're putting out a lot of content, generally about 10 minutes a piece, give or take? Um, yeah, so there's, uh, well, the five minute guides, yeah. uh, which have kind of crept up a little bit to sort of seven or eight minutes on a Saturday. Um, then there's uh, the dry dock on Sunday, which is n now about an hour of Q&A. Um, and then on Wednesdays there's a special of some kind. Sometimes it's 10, 15 minutes, sometimes it's two hours. Do you have an era or region of specialty? Are you like Trafalgar and Royal Navy or do you um, not care? I, I prefer to focus on sort of what I call the age of steam and steel. So, um, sort of 18... Just dreadnought well, 1850, sort of warrior, gloire, that kind okay. of thing, all the way through to 45, oh, just okay. after 45. Um, I'm quite happy to go back into the Age of Sail, um, even as far back as like the Armada. In fact, I'll, I'll go as far back in history, and naval-wise, as people want me to. Uh, although, obviously, sources get the first, the first, the first canoe battle. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, um, and uh, but after 45, I kind of, for various reasons don't cover that too much, um, partly because I don't like to get involved in politics and obviously mm. more ships that still in service yeah, yeah. have that connotation to them and also because there's an awful lot of stuff that came in even in the 50s and 60s that's still operational and so details are classified and I hate having to go, well, this thing could have this capability or it could have that capability. We don't know. It's all classified. So what's the philosophy behind the channel? Um, what are you trying to get out there? I just want people to learn more about naval history. Um, I, I started the channel basically because I got fed up with there not being a naval history channel um, specifically that I, well, that I could find. There may be them out there, but I didn't find yeah, them. Yeah. Um, and it was a combination of that and the fact that the, there were some people doing naval content um, that was kind of 20, 30, 40 minutes long about a specific ship class. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, that's great. However, I know that most people probably don't have half an hour to sit down and listen to it, and, but I also know that you could write multiple books on most, most of the ships that most people know about. So I thought, well, five, five minutes now, maybe sort of five to ten, is probably like a nice bite-sized chunk. It's enough to get over the key points, and it's, it's not about trying to tell people chapter and verse about absolutely everything there is to do yeah. with that ship. It's more about a primer of, here's the basic facts, statistics, what they did, when they were built, some notable incidents. Yeah, I'm not sure I can do five minutes. No. <laughs> and then to, to try and sort of say, if that is of interest to you, it's a motivation to then go and look into it more. So, so, there, so there's more people involved in naval history who like it. And then, so how do you decide what, what vessel you're going to do now? <laughs> uh, so way back at the beginning, um, I thought to myself, if I set the list of vessels up, uh, on the, sort of the Saturday videos, 
it's probably going to be Royal Navy, Royal Navy, Royal Navy, American, German, Royal Navy, Royal Navy, Royal Navy. And people get very fed up with it very quickly. So I put, very early, I put it out there and just said, right, if you've got a, a ship you want to see, tell me and I'll stick it on the list. Yeah. And in whatever chronological order I pick them up, that's the order I do them in. Plus and minus to that is I've now got about, assuming that I put out 1.5 minute guide a week, I've probably got about six years of content lined up. Um, and it only keeps growing because every video I put out, there's usually two or three new requests of ships yeah, that yeah. aren't already on the list. Um, so I keep most of the list off to one side. But yeah, so that's basically how, that's why the the content, like one one minute we might be talking about uh, an ironclad from the American Civil War, the next minute we'll be talking about a cruiser in World War II and then we'll be back to a river monitor in, from World War One. So do you talk about operational history or technical design or do you have, do you have an area of focus preference? Um, I prefer looking at the ships themselves, um, their sort of operational history um, and to a degree the people behind them. Um, obviously technical design gets very difficult to cover in five minutes but I do try and put some a lot more detail into the Wednesday videos mm -hmm. so um, if there's a particularly famous ship I'll put that on a Wednesday video it gets a lot more coverage um, and I'll look at sp sort of specific operations I did one recently about uh, Operation Rhino with the, the Voyage of the Bismarck um, and I've got I've got items lined up I'm currently halfway through a series on the development of the destroyer and then, um, so yeah, and I've got some videos lined up to do things like naval anti-aircraft, naval fire control, um, engines propulsion, steering, all those kind of things, which on the surface are, they seem simple, but then when you look into just how many anti-aircraft guns people had on ships and just how they worked and all of this kind of stuff, it's like, uh, there's, now, there's now a six foot pile, pile, high pile of reference material that you've got to delve through. And uh, so yeah, I try and to have time that. for this all then. Um, somehow I managed to fit it all in. I'm, I'm helped by having something of not quite photographic memory, but yeah. near enough. So I can rem remember 80, 80, 85% of what I've read. I can generally remember offhand, which a is helpful for skill research. I do not have. Because yeah. <laughs> it, it, I mean, it means that if I'm doing a video on a, on a subject, I can look around at my, at my library and go, I need that book, that book, that book, and that book. And if I come across something where there's a conflict, which quite often there is, yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay, well, what are the what are the primary sources that these books are used and then being based in South South London it's relatively easy to go up to either the National Maritime Museum or the National Archives in Kew and uh, pester them. <laughs> so what are you doing at Tankfest? Um, well I like I say I like all military streets I like planes I like tanks as well as ships um, I've been coming to Tankfest for the better part of five or six years at least. Oh, okay, I missed you last year then, obviously. Yeah, I, I think, I can't remember whether it was either last year or the year before, I, I skipped one of them. I do remember, I, and I actually still have, well, the, well, the second time Wargaming were here, mm -hmm. the first time they were giving away t-shirts, yeah. I did get you to sign that t-shirt, oh. which I still have. <laughs> I didn't have a beard. I'm embarrassed then, so now. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did have a beard at that point. Um, but yeah, no, so. Yeah, uh, I, I, I see you around, but I usually don't want to bother you too much because you always look like you're busy. I, I, I have been incredibly busy this tank fest. It's insane. I uh, haven't made anywhere near as many videos as I wanted to, but uh, that's just the nature of the job, I guess. Yeah. I mean, again, because you just run into people. It's like, oh, hang on. I, I've run into, okay, so I've got a, a floaty things guy to, uh, you know, director of the Swedish Museum or the American Museum yeah. right here. So, yeah. Of tanks, not yeah. big, great floaty things. <laughs> yeah. And I think the, the other thing is obviously there's a lot of other content creators here. Yeah. So I've done a collaboration or two with Military History Visualized. So he said, well, I'm at Tank Fest. So then he's in the UK rather than being in Austria. Yeah. Um, makes it a bit easier, right? Yeah. And it's easier easier for us to all meet up. So it's kind of this this one has been the first time that I've been here to meet other content creators as opposed to wandering around sort of uh, annoying <laughs> quickie baby or jingles <laughs> with various bits and pieces. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. All right. Any uh, anything you want to put out to my audience as to why you should subscribe to Drakenafell or? Um, well, you've got tanks, which are big armored boxes with guns on them. So if you like that, warships are even bigger armored, armored boxes, boxes with even guns bigger on guns on them. <laughs> so well, I, and you got the fact that the Royal Navy basically invented the tank. Yes. Yeah, that helps. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, and then, and yeah, well, they invented the tank and they invented a competent air force and they probably got it taken away from we, them. We should get into a Char B, which comes complete with an engine room that you yeah. can walk through passageways with hatches everywhere. It's going to just make you feel right at home, really. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of crossover, obviously, as well, because a lot of the naval, the, well, not so much the smaller stuff, but the, the larger oh, guns. Oh, the guns here. are crossover. Yeah. So do you uh, do you show up uh, in person at any other events or um, do people recognize you yet? Uh, what? Well, no. In fairness, I didn't recognize him. I saw the T-shirt. And was uh, well, <laughs> this is the thing. Up up until to, up until basically today, or technically yesterday evening. Um, my face wasn't attached to any of my um, channel or anything like that. Um, there was just the logo. Yeah. Hence why I got this T-shirt made, because I said to a few of the people who were on my Discord, I will be at Tank Fest. I'm like, How do you reckon, will we recognize you? I'm like, oh. I'll be wearing my logo to see, see that. That's so how I ended it. up with the Cav Stetson as well. As, uh, oh, I, mean, right. I, I had one already, but it's a cavalryman. But it's kind of, how will we find you at a museum? So I'll be the tallest guy there with a Cav Stetson. Yeah. Uh, it works. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I've, I've, been to, I've been to other events as just a, a general attendee. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, if Wargaming want to organize something naval in Chatham or Portsmouth, I'm up for that, <laughs> definitely. But. Um, World of Warships, which obviously is probably not, not to be not mentioned my in department. Tank Fest. Not my department. <laughs> no, no but, uh, not at least because it's the wrong continent. But I mean, I've played, I've played World of Tanks since the beta, so yeah. I've, I've got just as much an interest of being here as much as anything else. All right, fair enough. Well, interview over, I guess. Uh, yeah. It's a pleasant surprise. Again, you never know who you're going to meet at these things. Always keep your eyes open and don't be afraid to tap them on the shoulder. If they're busy, they'll tell you, hey, I'm busy, I've got to be somewhere else to have an appointment. Otherwise, it's a missed opportunity. So, take care, we'll see what comes up next. All right. <laughs> there we go. Thank you.